All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi there, everybody. Uh, it's now one minute past the hour, so we're going to get started with our public webinar today. Uh, uh, this is our special public webinar hosted by Filehold Software. And uh, today's public webinar subject matter is uh, eight ways to go paperless. And my name's David Knight, and I'm going to be one of the presenters along with Kevin MacArthur. Uh, also in attendance today for today's public webinar are our sales consultants, Kevin Chang and Chris Oliver as well. And in today's public webinar, it consists of three parts. Uh, the first part is a brief PowerPoint introduction, uh, which I'll be doing. And the second part will be conducted by Kevin MacArthur, who will take you through a live demo and show you the eight ways to go paperless in your office. Uh, and in the final part of this webinar, it's reserved for your questions. And you can use our chat function on the right-hand side of your screen to type your questions. And we'll respond and, and share your answers with the rest of the group at the end of the live demo. All right, so without any other further delays, we're going to get moving into the introduction portion. And on the first screen here, uh, we wanted to ask the question, is your office being bombarded by all types of documents, such as invoices, contracts, forms, and other office-related material? Uh, is the accumulation of all these documents taking up physical space in boxes and filing cabinets throughout your office? In this chaotic environment, documents can easily be lost or deleted or destroyed in error. The task of trying to track and keep on top of all this information can be a very difficult challenge to say the least. Here are some common problems from businesses that aren't working in a paperless environment. Things like, I can find anything on Google, but I can't find the proposal I wrote last month. Or there are five different people writing the same policies. Why can't we share work and avoid needless duplication of effort? Or how do we stay in compliance with rules regarding record retention and disposition? Do any of these problems exist in your workplace? If so, today's public webinar can be very helpful to you. It's possible to capture and organize your documents and place them in a secure paperless environment. Uh, also, once these documents are stored away electronically, the life cycle of each document can be stored, classified, and updated right through to the scheduled deletion or disposition. Uh, documents that cannot be stored electronically, such as drawings or blueprints, can also be tracked offline by their physical location. In today's public web webinar, we're going to show you the following eight ways to go paperless. Uh, the first solution is uh, old paper, classification, limitations of paper, advantages of, of using metadata. The second solution we're going to show you is new paper, uh, day forwarding, scanning, uh, zonal OCR. The so third solution we'll be looking at is offline content, uh, physical records, managing equipment, uh, paper that will never be scanned. Our fourth solution we'll be looking at is office documents. Uh, this includes uh, office documents such as Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, etc. Solution number five is uh, dealing with PDFs and uh, TIFF documents. Uh, we have a, a product, uh, a feature called Print a File Hold that can assist with this. Uh, we also have drag and drop features and OCR content search. Uh, the sixth solution are forms, uh, automated forms, also known as e-forms, uh, that you can do electronically. Uh, the seventh solution is electronic documents, such as videos, CAD drawings, faxes, etc. And the eighth solution is preserved information, converting files to records, retention, and disposition. All right, so that ends the introduction portion. We're going to move quickly into uh, today's live demo. So I'm going to hand the controls over now to Kevin, and he's going to show you the eight ways uh, to go paperless, starting with our, our first solution. So, Kevin, are you ready to get going here? 
I am ready to go. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely loud and clear. So I'm going to make you the presenter and we'll do the exchange here. Okay. I am now broadcasting my screen. Can you see the uh, FileHold website open? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then lastly, let me just transition over here. Can you now see the, uh, the slide that we left off on? Yep, absolutely. Okay, perfect. All right, so first thing, guys, to everybody, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. We have a large turnout today, and um, we applaud you in, in taking this first step to going paperless. So what I'm going to do is take you through just a couple more slides and then do an interactive live demo of, of FileHold and of some of the concepts that we'll be talking about here today. So let's go ahead and advance this slide. The first thing I want to talk about uh, before we get into any sort of software and solutions is coming up with a bit of a strategy for going paperless. So before you even uh, buy a scanner, buy hardware or software, we need to be thinking about how we're going to attack this. And a lot of this is going to happen on a piece of paper or on a spreadsheet uh, during the planning stage. And here are some of the things we just want you to think about. So the first one is the planning stage is, is are you going to scan in your back file or are you going to start with paper that comes in the front door first? There is no right or wrong answer here. Uh, different people have different reasons. If you're moving from one office to another, you may want to get every, all the back stuff done before you move to your new office. If you have no problems keeping that warehouse just a little while longer, you may want to start out with a day forward approach and then start integrating the, the old stuff in over time. We also need to be thinking about electronic content. A lot of us are taking in emails. We're taking in all kinds of disparate content. How are we going to blend that into the paper that we're scanning? We need to be thinking about approach. Are we going to do a departmental approach? Maybe we're going to start in accounting first, and then when accounting is humming along, we're going to go into HR, for example. Are we going to tackle this whole animal at once and buy 800 licenses of software, or are we going to start with five and grow into this organically? What sort of hardware environment are we going to need? Are we going to go cloud-based? Are we going to go on-premise um, or a bit of a hybrid there? What software will we need to acquire? How much storage do we need to plan for? What will our disaster recovery look like? Uh, that sort of thing. So we need to be thinking about that. And any one of us can help you. So as you're going through this planning stage, we have some resources here at FileHold that we can direct you to and some learning materials that will help you flush that out. But we're here to answer any questions. Which reminds me, as we go through this, this seminar, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat window. We'll, we'll address them as we can. Um, we'll certainly follow up with you after this meeting, but uh, if you think of anything, your questions might help the rest of us. They might help the group um, as we all plan to go paperless. So the next big thing that you'll have to consider is system design and standardization. If you held up a piece of paper today, there's a decent chance that somebody would say, okay, that's a contract, and someone say that that's a new contract or a new acquisition form. So we want to make sure that when I hold up a piece of paper, we're all identifying with the same terminology. We're all using the same nomenclature. We want to be thinking about how we search for files today. A lot of us have limitations with paper as to how we put things into a file cabinet. It might be alphabetical, it might be by last name. So we want to be thinking a little differently when we start doing classification. We also want to consider our compliance requirements. You know, do we have to keep things for a certain amount of time? You know, what does our security model look like? You know, if I log in, can I see payroll? That sort of thing. We want to be thinking about our processes too. We want to be thinking about, you know, do if I if I sign this this invoice, how does it get to to get paid? How does it go down the hall? How does it move out to our our offices at remote sites? So. I've often said that just looking at document management and just looking at going paperless really helps organizations. You might have done something the same way for 30 years and no one really asked why. This is a moment for you to look at the organization, look at how paper flows through the company and figure out ways to make things better. And I, I think just by going through this process, life is gonna get better for a lot of you, okay? Now, one of the reasons that people never go paperless is that it's a, it's a bit of a daunting task. Where do we start? How do we, how do, we do this? And, and the biggest fear that, that I hear is what if we do it wrong? You know, what if we do something today on our, on our path to going paperless and we completely miss the mark? We, we, we encourage you not to think that way. There's going to be an evolution that you go through. There, there's going to be analysis that you go through that helps you identify how things can get better. So in other words, you, you might file a contract 
with five metadata fields, and then in a year from now decide, you know, it'd be really handy if we had a sixth field that would allow us to, to run this report or run this kind of search. Or, you know, I've been studying the way we do things, and it turns out that these steps are redundant. Why, why don't we get rid of them? Filehold um, and, and systems like Filehold are going to leave the, the door open for that sort of thing. So as you grow and as you learn, things are going to get better and better over time. But there are means to, to, to handle that evolution through technology. So don't worry about it. Don't let that be a barrier to stop. Now, it is a good argument for you to start small. If you can start in one department, a lot of these lessons learned are going to start coming out over time. Uh, so please don't let that hinder you as you, as you go paperless. Another thing that people kind of gloss over, and I think it's important, is file preparation. So, you know, we, we think about technology, we think about software, we think about all the things we're going to need to go paperless. But don't forget about all the staples. Don't forget about the documents that are folded up, that are kept in a musty warehouse with dust and spiders. Don't forget about uh, all the things that you're going to need to do to get those documents ready for scanning. So be mindful of that, you know, setting up tables in that room. Um, you know, dehumidifying the room if you can, L pulling documents that haven't been seen the light of day for 10 years, get those out, let the air hit them, let them start to dry out. Uh, those things can all help you go paperless. This is the biggest one, in my opinion, on this list, and that is change management. This is going to be a culture shock. If you truly are a paper-driven company and you've been doing this for hundreds of years, like many of us have, this is going to be a big change for people. Now, the closest uh, equation I can make is how we left from memos into email. That was a pretty big transition you know, many years ago, but none of us would ever go back. We would never say, you know what? We're gonna uninstall Outlook and let's go back to memos. That was more handy, that was more useful. I think by now we're all really, really comfortable with email. We're all getting very comfortable with Google. We're getting very comfortable with the internet. So we have to prepare for that though. There is kind of a changing of the guard and we don't wanna underestimate it. So not forcing people down a road where there are limitations as to how they work. We want to embrace the way you've always worked, but we just want to do it in a paperless way. Okay, and the last one is be mindful of a go live date. If you decide to do this, you know, you don't want to start a project like this in your busy season. We never hear from accounting department or accountants at tax time. We, you know, if your business is seasonal and summer is your moment uh, where things get slow, that's a good time to do it. So. Be mindful of when you might start this project. And, and back to the other one in terms of culture shock, when you choose a department, it's a good idea to think about, you know, if, if I'm going to go on the off season and I'm going to start at a place, start with a department of people that you know are open to this idea. Having a good mood about this, this approach can really help make this successful for you uh, and help you plan that go live date as well. Okay, so just some things to think about. There are, of course, heaps of other things to think about, but these are the key ones that I think are important uh, as you make this mental transition. All right, so let's go over to the, to the eight ways to go paperless. And the first one, the first two are gonna kind of go together. We're talking about paper here, obviously. If we're gonna go paperless, let's talk about paper. So one of the first things you have to think about is the old stuff. I've got a warehouse full of paper. I've seen shipping containers full of paper. I've, I've seen it all, actually. <laughs> and old paper is, is the one people are mostly afraid of. If you think about things, a lot of times you'll go into a file room and there's paper in there that could have been shredded and deleted or thrown away 50 years ago. But nobody will do it. Nobody is, A, wants to do it because it's not fun. But also, it, it can be a burden. It can be a fear factor. We, we don't want to get rid of paper because what if we need it again? So we need to be thinking about that. Um, there are so many advantages to, to getting rid of old paper. Um, the limitations that we have, as we talked about, if there is a fire or a flood, you're not coming back from that. You're not going to recover those paper files. They're gone. Whereas once they're electronic, we can save them. Metadata means that I can start asking questions of that old paper in such a powerful way, and I'm about to show you some of that. Once we get things scanned in, obviously the storage opens up. So, so many, so many things to talk about here with old paper. So let's let's go over to my desktop and start talking about some of the things that we can do. So I'm going to jump over here to my desktop, and what you're seeing here is the front door of of our software, which is called Filehold. And what Filehold is meant to do is emulate your paper-based filing system in an electronic way. Okay. So as I log in, you can see the little stack of paper synchronizing. And I've now built a very simple world for you where you have a search bar that behaves a lot like Google, and I have a library of filing cabinets that's not, not un, unlike 
the dusty file room that you have today, okay? You've got filing cabinets. Within filing cabinets, you're gonna open up drawers. Within drawers, you're gonna open up folders. And then ultimately, you're gonna find folders, okay? So th this isn't a huge departure from what you're doing. There's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes here, but from a basic point of view, this is your life paper in a paperless way. Now, in order to get files into a system like this, they've gotta be scanned in. So here's the good news. FileHold is completely scanner neutral, okay? So what I mean by that is, and let's go out of this. What I mean by that is you can use any device that you already have. They could be scanners that you already bought, your multifunction devices, your incoming faxes, your scanners, your desktops, your servers. You can buy any brand you want. It could be a Fujitsu or a Panasonic or a Canon. It, it doesn't really matter. The idea is simple. You're gonna scan documents in. We're going to look at them, make sure the image quality is good. We're going to do some functions on those things to remove artifacts and clean up the images. But at the end of the day, the concept is the same. You could put headphones on, scan and make sure things look good, okay? Once they're scanned, they're gonna automatically go into file hold and come at you very similar to what you're seeing here. So rather than holding a piece of paper in my hand, I'm now holding this document in my hand. This could be a scan file, okay? We're all pretty comfortable with that idea. Now, what we wanna do though, is we wanna make sure things are getting in in a uniform way and a bit of quality. So what I'm gonna show you now is a front end tool that, that we provide that will help make life a little better when you're doing your scanning. So this is called SmartSoft. This is one of many front end scanning tools that you can use. And this is what it looks like. So I've sat down, I've got some dusty paper. I've set it on onto a document feeder or a flat bed. And I'm now gonna start, I'm gonna hit go. I'm gonna start scanning these documents in. So I'm gonna hit the scan button, or in this case, I'm gonna load up some samples. You see how that's crooked? It just got straightened out. Sometimes you'll see faxes be very faint. We're gonna make them darker. We're gonna remove artifacts and, and turbulence that might be on that page, okay? We're gonna break it up into batches. We're gonna scan the first three as one document, the next five as a second, the next 10 as a third. And we're gonna start separating out batches for you so that we can get things in quickly, okay? Now again, you can do this with a scanner that you already have on your desk or down the hall. Or if you buy new scanners, you can bolt it onto this software. But there's some cool things going on beyond what I just said. So I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna zoom in so that you can. Do you see these boxes everywhere? What the system is trying to do is help you make sense of what you just scanned. So all I did is, is, is exactly as I described. I put files in a, in a scanner and I hit go. But, but this software took it to the next level and it started to try to read what was on that page. So look at this, it says invoice. It's got a vendor name here. It says Diana's name here. There's an order number. Every single line item here has a box drawn around it. Even these date and signature fields were all captured. And what the software is trying to do is help you not type. It's helping, helping you trying to make sense of things. So look, it moved the, the, the vendor. It assumed that this was the vendor. It assumes that this is the date. It assumes that this is the PO number or reference number. Okay, it, this is the, the subtotal and so on. So it's trying to make sense and help you with logic and with algorithms behind the scenes. I don't even truly understand how these things work, um, but I think of it as magic to some degree. But at the end of the day, it's extracting data. Now you can teach the software to get smarter and to get better and to look in the right neighborhoods and to look at the right points to, to get this done. But at the end of the day, once this data has been extracted, and, and I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes it'll think a zero is an O. Sometimes it'll think that one is an L. So it's not perfect, it's, it, it's still a computer, but it's gonna take you a long ways to not having to type documents in. Once you hit save or export, we're actually gonna send this information into the document management system or into file hold. And this is what life would look like. Let's go back over here to my repository. I'm gonna minimize this file cabinet. And I'm gonna walk over to this one. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna go over to invoices, nice and clean. And I have one called SSC invoices that I wanna show you. And now here they are. The files are there. We are now paperless. We've scanned these documents in and we're looking at them. And you can see some new ones just came in. Here's some other things that happen. If, you've, if anybody who scanned the document today knows that your scanner or your multifunction will give it some of the dumbest file names you've ever seen, some arbitrary number that doesn't make sense that if you ever lost it, you'd never find it again. What, what, what this system is doing and what file is helping you do is standardize the naming convention so that now going forward, I can see the vendor, 
I can see the date that it came in, the PO or invoice number, and maybe an account number. What I'm also doing is I'm using that scan to calculate the document name, vendor, the date, and any of those attributes that we wanted to capture. This is gonna be important at the end. I'm gonna show you how powerful this data becomes. I can now ask very, very interesting questions of my file room. I no longer have to just think about last name or just think about company name. I could say, show me all invoices in the last 90 days that Journey paid us under $500 that Kevin worked on before we fired him. And I would be able to hand you those files in three seconds. So very, very interesting things start to happen. Okay, so we're well on our way now. We've scanned these documents and we've brought them in. Now, in, in, in some cases, you're not going to want to do this. The automation is great when you know the invoice number is in the top left and you know that the, the contract number is in the middle. It's really useful for that. But sometimes you're just getting things willy-nilly and you want to bring them into the system. So let's do that. We're going to leave this behind and I'm going to go to this area in file hold called the inbox. Just think of this as your desk. Think of this as a mail room. You can drag and drop into here you can have your system automatically send files into here. You can put a file on your desk and have it brought into here automatically. I can hit this plus sign and go out and find files that I wanna bring in, and there we go. You can even dra drag and drop email if you want. But eventually, the concept is always gonna be exactly the same. I need to look at this file, and I need to know what it is. This is a journal, this is a, this is a, um, you know, a news article. If I go over to another one, right? This one might be a brochure. Very handy to look at these. Then what you're going to do is you're going to hit set metadata and a door opens up for you on the right. And in that door, everything that we talked about during your planning stage is going to be in this list. So all the document types that you've defined for your company or organization are going to be in this list. If it was an I-9 for HR, then I need to know who the employee is, their number, their address, their social, and their date of birth. What if it was something else though? What if it was a schematic? Well, now I want the reference part number, the part number itself, what sort of part it was, and a description of what you're putting in the system. So here you see document types, and here you see the appropriate attributes that you would file. This is a, this is a very powerful way of thinking, because what it does now is it forces your document type structure, it forces data to get entered in. Here's a list of all of our vendors. It has date pickers, drop downs. We can talk to other systems like your accounting software. Once this data is filled in, it's going to standardize the naming convention for you, clean up after itself, and notify people that it's here. Okay, so again, I've sat down, I've poured documents into a scanner. Those files end up here electronic. I set metadata and off they go. And now we can do some very, very interesting things. And we now have uniform and standardization across these files. Okay. All right, so let's get back to here. So we've talked about the old paper, classifications. We've talked about, uh, to some degree, new paper, the idea of day forward scanning and zonal OCR, okay? Paper in general, uh, doesn't matter which approach you take, but they're both gonna be, play a role here. Okay, one of the things though is, regardless of how you get paper in, we talked about zonal OCR, and, and that's just a fancy way of saying, look in the top left for the invoice number, look in the bottom right, okay? but we're looking for forms and ways to automate things. And, and that's really the goal of, of getting paper in, is automation and getting things in quickly and accurately. Okay, what about stuff that's never gonna be scanned? If I go into that file room, there's a good chance I'm gonna find bankers boxes that we don't need to scan anymore, but we might still wanna keep them on hand. What if you have equipment? What if you have company vehicles and someone wants to take it home for the weekend? What if we have a hardware or we have computers that we wanna know when every year we wanna refresh them or we wanna know what software is running on those applications. We can do all that if we want. So let's go back into file hold and look at more of this. If I go back into my library and I go down the hall, whoops. Let's go down here to physical assets. These are things that are not paper. I'm gonna go and look at them. I've got a 2018 folder. And within that, I've tracked a couple of things. I've got computer hardware, software license keys, my equipment, land. It's very difficult to scan land. You've got paper documents, tools, and vehicles. That's just a small sampling of what's possible. Let's go into computer hardware. I got a new laptop this year. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 laptop. And if I click on this, the attributes are here just like if it were paper. It's a physical asset. It's a ThinkPad, computer hardware. 
it was sold to the sales office and it was purchased in 2018. This is very useful if I want to find out all the laptops that got refreshed in 2018 for the sales team. I want If I have a warranty issue, I can attach a receipt to this. I could find ways to use this even though I'm not actually scanning my laptop. This is now just a placeholder. So really, really powerful. What if you have blueprints that are too big to scan or you don't want to buy the expensive uh, platform scanner? You can track blueprints. This is in the engineering room on the ninth floor. I can just go up and get it. I could even check this out and I could request that it be locked so that everybody knows that I'm the guy that took these blueprints home today, okay? Here's some contracts that are on the third floor. These are gonna be scanned, but they haven't been scanned yet. This is a great way to track what we haven't done yet. So really, really handy, and it's really easy to create. You're just gonna to go to file, add an offline document. As soon as you do that, give it a name. And let's say this is a hard drive. Okay, tell me what it is. It's computer hardware, software, equipment, land, and so on. It's hardware, okay? It's in the server room. That's all you have to do. You're now classifying things that you couldn't do before. Somebody would have to go into a room and find and physically see what's going on. This eliminates shrinkage. This is search capabilities on things that we couldn't search before, okay? So think about those things as well. This is all part of the strategy, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. Office documents, okay, so we're humming along now. We've got paper in the system. We've thought about some ways to automate things. We're now tracking physical hardware and equipment and company vehicles. Okay, a lot of us are using Microsoft Office where we're, we're creating Word documents, spreadsheets, emails. How do we deal with those things now that we're going paperless? Okay, so let's go back into file hold again. Forgive me, all right. So one of the things that we do in all of Office, and you probably didn't see it, but up here in the top of this PowerPoint that we're working off of, there is a tab that's been baked in here called file hold. If you click on that, I could take David's PowerPoint presentation and add it right into file hold with one single click. What are we filing here? This is a presentation. Well, go find me the presentations, and now tell me who the author was, and tell me the presentation it was. Put any notes in here if you think they're relevant, and hit add, and that's it. Right from Office, you've now saved documents directly into the system. So coexisting with all your paper are electronic files as well. Okay. And that you'll find that everywhere. You'll find it in, in Excel, Visio, OneNote. Here it is in Word. Same thing. We can browse the system to help us write a letter. We could add directly in. We could lock this document down and have a version history among uh, a collaboration group. I can also attach this as part of a workflow for review and approval if I choose to. Okay. Outlook does it too. Outlook goes a little bit further as well. If I just wanted to, if you sent me your time card, I could just go into your attachment, right click it, and add that directly into file hold from Outlook if I wanted to. What if I wanted to capture the whole email though for later on for compliance? Just go to that tab and hit the add button just like before. Only now I'm gonna tell you that this was an email and I'm gonna extract the to, the from, the subject, and the date for you automatically. Show me all time cards that got emailed in the last 90 days and I'll be able to hand you those in, in a few seconds. Okay, so office integration is usually very useful. This is something a lot of our clients use. This is also a standard feature in file, just so you know. All right, so let's go back to my PowerPoints. Number five is PDFs and TIFF images, okay? So remember, when you're scanning, you get to decide what the images are going to be. They could be TIFF images, they could be PDFs. Uh, we're seeing PDF kind of take over the world, um, but in the old days, uh, for a long, long time, TIFFs, are basically the image format people were using. So no problems. If you have existing TIFFs out there today, we're gonna to treat them like everything else. You can drag and drop into file hold. Um, you can print directly into the system. And I'd like to show you how that works. So let's say that somebody emails you that time card. Let's go back to Outlook. Okay, whoops. I always go too fast here. I did it again, a little slower. There we go. So we got this time card. You just emailed it to me. I'm gonna open it up and have a look, okay? Here it is. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit send file and I can either attach it to email if I want. I could print it and one of the print choices that I have is going to be to send to file hold. So this is almost a virtual printer if you will. Now look what happens if I hit that button. I'm gonna take a look at it. 
to shrink this down a little bit. It's kind of cut off because of my resolution. But hit print. Okay. And now, do I want to save this as a printed file as a new document, or do I want to append this to an existing document? So in this example, I want to make it a new one. I'm going to hit OK. And just like we did in that PowerPoint, tell me what this is. Okay, so there's no more printing the stuff out, scanning it back in, re-entering metadata. We're now just going to extract it directly there. Okay. Now, one of the benefits of, of scanning, one of the benefits of going paperless is going to come around search as well. So the idea now is that if you bring PDFs in, we're going to run a process called OCR over these scanned images, over your existing PDFs and TIFFs. But this is what life will look like for you. When you now go to search, you can click on the search node here and just type in a word or phrase. I like to use this one because it never goes away. It's always in the top. If I type in a word or a phrase and I hit go, FileHold is going to go through the entire system and bring back any results that met my criteria. Now, obviously, we know that the file names are being standardized, so you know this is pretty clear. Um, we also can see the word policy right in the file name, so that's not special or unique. But look at this crazy thing. That's an arbitrary file number if I've ever seen one. So what it's doing is it's actually searching the context of your file. If I hit highlight results, every word of every page that you scanned or printed from into file hold, let me make this a little bit bigger, is now being picked up. So as we scroll along, I picked a long one this time. There we go. And you can see here at the, at, in the context, the word policy was grabbed and lit up in yellow for us, letting us know why it came back in that search result. So as a result of putting PDFs and TIFFs, not just ones that you scan, but existing content that you already had or that your clients are sending you or that are being emailed into you, we can now search every word of every page. Very, very powerful. Okay. And just as a side note, we're also searching the metadata as well. This is a CHS document. It's an, about ammonia. It's a maintenance file when it was due, when it was received, the rev number. So all those attributes we talked about as well are being picked up also. All right, back to our list here. All right, forms processing. Okay, so now we're evolving even further. Let's say that you had a PDF document that was a form. Somebody downloaded it from your website and filled that out. Or maybe it was a Word document that you made into a fillable form. Somebody went to the trouble of populating that data. I can't tell you how many times we've seen people take those forms, get them emailed to them, print them out, and then key in this data right back into file. I know it sounds crazy, but we see it every single week. So what we want to do is we want to go into forms processing. So once again, let's go back to file hold. We're going to minimize this. Leave this behind for a moment. Let's kill some of this out. I've got a form here. This is in Microsoft Word. Somebody went to the trouble of filling this data in already. Last name, first name. There's even a little date picker built in. You can do this in Adobe too. I've seen it. Somebody went to the trouble of getting all this information keyed in. Again, all I have to do is get this into file hold. So let's do it the most convenient way we know, which is to hit add. As soon as I hit the add button, file hold has not only identified that this is an application, I don't even have to classify it. It filled in all those data points for me automatically. All I have to do now is hit add, and that's the end of it. So again, we can utilize information that's already been captured. We did it early on in, in this presentation through Zonal OCR, but now we're doing it off of a form that somebody filled in. And this is probably starting to set your expectations. We want to look for ways to automate filing. We want to look for ways to standardize things. This is going to make your life so much better than it is today. OK. Let's go back to here. All right, so just a recap. We've dealt with paper. We've dealt with offline content. We've dealt with Office documents. We've talked about PDFs and TIFF images, which will be new scans, but also existing PDFs and TIFFs and content. We've talked about forms. We are now on number seven. What about electronic documents? What about video files, CAD files? What if it's a file type I've never heard of? That's okay, FileHold can store anything. You know that it can handle offline content, like we did in number three there. But we also know that it can store anything, even if a file has never been heard of by, by us. And let me illustrate that a little bit. So let's go back into the software. And let's walk down the hall to our marketing department. Okay. So if I go into marketing, we break this down. I've got a marketing collateral drawer. And, and by the way, you have complete control over all of this. 
So we have an audio folder, we have brochures, we have multimedia, and we have video. Let's go into video here. I now have a video that's been recorded. And look at this, it's got the metadata just like everything else. This is marketing collateral, it's a video, and it was created back in 2018, okay? If I double click on this file, it's gonna open up in its native application. And we are now flying down the beach. So this allows us to be able to store any file type known to man, even if I've never heard of it, CAD files, your engineering files can be all dealt with here. Your engineers will know what to do, but we now have a full audit trail. We know what's going on in real time to this file. We can control it. We can set security against it. And these are all some things we'll talk about here towards the end. So it, not just paper here, we're talking about an all encompassing centralized repository for everything. Okay. And we're back again. All right, and we are now on the eighth one. Preserved information, converting files to records, retention and disposition, and so on. So as it stands now, you might have a file room out there that has paper that goes back hundreds of years. For some of you, it's a mandate that you keep it forever. For others, some of this is a liability that you're keeping. It should have been purged years ago, and if anybody ever found it, it could cause trouble. But it's, da it's a daunting task to go in there and tackle that stuff. Nobody really wants to do it. And even if they did, it's daunting. It's a lot to do. So once this is paperless, we can now automate a lot of your preservation. What I mean by that is let's say that you had a file. And that file, we're supposed to keep them for two years. After two years, they're not really relevant to the day-to-day -day business anymore. They, they can be put somewhere else and stay in that other place for 50 years. At the end of 50 years, I really would prefer them just to go away. We don't need them anymore. That whole process, once you're paperless, can be automated entirely. So let me show you what I mean. <clears throat> this is our day-to-day -day library. This is our accounting department, education, energy, and so on. We also have a library archive down here, which can emulate this world whenever we want. So in other words, if, if Andy left the company and I wanted to be able to archive his folder, what that would do is freeze down the metadata that he had, lock all his files so that people can't delete them anymore, even if they used to have rights to, and it's gonna move that into an area that is called the archive. So I'm able to do that in, in several different ways. I can archive his drawer. I could archive an entire department if I wanted to and lock those files down. So what I mean by that is the metadata that we put out here would no longer be editable. We could no longer change things. It would now be frozen down. This is important for compliance. This is important for legal hold. So at any moment, if I say this policy is outdated, Okay, we're gonna revise it. And I double click on it and start working on it. In this case, it's Adobe, so I wouldn't do it here. I might do it in Word, but this is an old one. People are allowed to park in this lot now. We can right click and we could send this to archive. And what that means later on is that when I go to do a search and I say I'm looking for a policy, I'm only gonna see the current stuff. These policies are only the ones that are relevant to today. But if I wanted to, I could look in the archive and go see policies from 50 years ago if I want, okay? So very, very powerful way of think, thinking about it. If two years go by and this is automatically goes to archive, you're gonna be notified. It's gonna send you an email. It's also gonna send you a calendar notification that, hey, this is going to archive this month. And you might say, well, our auditor told us we now have to keep this forever. We can circumvent that and change that around. So retention and disposition is not gonna be automated. We're not building up warehouses anymore. The system is taking over, it's auditing behavior, it's locking documents down to protect them for archive reasons, and this is a huge component of compliance. Okay. All right, so we did it. We've gone through the eight different steps. We now have just about five minutes or so. To, we have a pool table in the, the, the file 